This is a presentation on the Sandinista Revolution in Nicaragua to the 1979 victory by me, Natalie Manahan. So first I wanted to ease things in with the introduction and the timeline. To the left, I first want to show you an image of the country of Nicaragua, highlighted in yellow. And it's a little capital star there of Managua. To the south is Costa Rica. To the north is Honduras. Then El Salvador, Guatemala, Belize. To the left, labeled as the Pacific Ocean. And to the right is the Pacific Caribbean Sea. It's important to note that Nicaragua is the largest country in Central America. And over here to the right is a little table timeline to be read from left to right, up to down. I color-coded it to make it at least a little bit easier to follow what I was doing. Here in white is Sandino, and we're going to get into him, but he basically led the guerrillas against the United States occupation, which was from 1912 to 1933, so just to keep that in mind. And the Somosas, and that's not just one person, that's an entire family of people because this is a family dictatorship that lasts around 40 years, to keep that in mind. Um, from 1937 to 1979, note that when Sandino's occupation conflict ends, it's not long before the Samosas family dictatorship picks up in the same decade. Below that is the Sandinista Revolution. This is the Sandinista Liberation Front founding to the end of the conflict. The Sandinista Revol Liberation Front was founded in 1961 and they were able to end the conflict in 1979. Note that the Somosas family dictatorship also ended in 1979. So it's not a coincidence that both end in the same year. Because once the family dictatorship ends, the Sandinistas are able to overthrow the government and gain control. Now, here's the question is, who are the Sandinistas? It's similar if you think about who the Zapatistas are, which is named after Zapata. Well, it's the same. And here's an image of him, Augusto Cesar Sandino. The name Sandinistas is taken in honor of Augusto Cesar Sandino from 1893 to 1934. Was his life? who was the guerrilla leader during the United States occupation of Nicaragua. This was from 1912 to 1933, as mentioned before. He actively led the rebellion against the United States occupation from 1927 to 1933. So he wasn't rebelling the entire time the United States was occupying Nicaragua, but it was through a large portion of it. To the So he was able to be in the rebellion, leading the rebellion, and was able to see the end of the actual conflict with the United States leaving Nicaragua. He also teamed up during this time with liberal Juan Bautista Sacasa, who had actually returned from exile. Yes, he had been exiled before this and became president of Nicaragua in 1932. Unfortunately, in 1936, he was forced to resign by Somoza, remember the family again that became dictators, and was basically forced out of exile again after being ousted to the United States where he died. So he never ended up going back there afterwards. Now, who are the Sandinistas? As we will continue, Augusto Sandino was seen as more of a villain or a bandit by the United States perspective. However, in Nicaragua and other parts of Latin America, he was seen as a hero of the revolution. Kind of like the little guy trying to take down the big guy over there while over here who they were just seen as more like criminals. 
However, in 1934, he was assassinated by order of General Anastasio Somoza Garcia, who later becomes president in 1937. Now, this is the beginning of the third of the 40 year dictatorship by him and his family. So he's Garcia is the first one to actually take over. And initially it is as president. It's not as they weren't saying we're going to start a dictatorship. You start it as president. And here is an image of the U.S. Marines holding Sandino's battle flag in 1932. I thought it was a very interesting image because it's shortly before they leave the country of Nicaragua. Now about the Sandinista Revolution. From 1937 through 1979, the Somoza family runs a dictatorship. Now... This is when it starts to become obvious that it's a dictatorship and not just a general presidency to try to get things running. Is in 1956, General Somoza is assassinated. And instead of re-electing someone else and having a normal election, his son ends up taking over. Now, eventually, a few years later, in 1961, the Sandinista Liberation Front also known as the S FSLN, which is an abbreviation for the Spanish version, which is why it's usually abbreviated because you would have to say the whole Spanish thing out, which is Frente Sandinista de Liberación Nacional was established by Silvio Mayorga, Tomar Boder, and Carlos Fonseca. The FSLN was inspired by Cuba and their objective was to use basically a political, bureaucratic, and military means to overthrow and destroy the Somoza dictatorship. This started to pick up around 1975 and ended in 1979, of course. The National Guard and the Sandinistas fight each other. Basically, they were already opposing the government, but things really started to heat up around the mid-70s. And they've gotten to a conflict. And even up to a year before that, things were escalating rapidly. So basically, they fought each other. And the result was the Sandinistas were able to actually overthrow the Samosa family dictatorship. I put um, a link here, but also hyperlink. But then I just put the regular link underneath just in case. I would just watch the first 10 minutes and 21 seconds. But it's basically about the background of the Sandinistas and the whole conflict and how the United States viewed the Samosas over time and how it was a complicated manner about support versus not support versus influence and everything else. Everything that happens after 1021 is more to do with other presentation about the results and aftermath of what happens after Sandinistas seize power and are able to overthrow the government and going through the square and all that wonderful this oh and here it is here's the image of the let's see the rebels ride their tank in the main square of Managua as Junta arrives, uh, yes, June 20th, 1979, to take control of the government. So this was in on June 20th. It's a very energetic image. So the United States had not intervened in Nicaragua since they left in 1933. Very important to mention. They had not gone into the country and tried to push things one way or the other. After they left, they left everything alone. In 1979, the FSLN were able to overthrow the current president. And I put president quotation marks because it really wasn't a legitimate presidency. And they were able to end the current Somoza dictatorship going on at the time. This resulted in the Sandinistas beginning their rule of Nicaragua in the same year, 1979, which ends up lasting till 1990. I will not get into it any more than that. And basically the conclusion, I want to say the main point, is the Sandinistas were named after Augusto Cesar Sandino. So remember, just remember the Sandinistas are named after someone named Sandino is the best way to think of it. 
The United States withdrawal from Nicaragua in 1933. It's a strained, complicated situation. Also remember the United States ha were going through the Great Depression at the time. So to be able to put money into that country or have that connection was very difficult. So it's best to understand it from that perspective as well as just the constant revolutions that were going on. The Somoza family dictatorship lasts from 1937 through 1979. Also very important, the Sandinista Liberation Front, FSLN, established in 1961. Remember the Somoza dictatorship is overthrown by the Sandinistas in 1979, where the Sandinistas are in charge. And what I would say is, important to remember is this is the only other time or place where the left side won or the other than Cuba so they were able to overthrow the government and take control well I hope you enjoyed take care